Hey, everybody! Welcome to Ceramic. So, for today's video, I'm going to be making the jacket of... Iruna Yamatsuki! ...who is a character from the anime Kakegurui. Nope, it's Kakegurui. Anyways, it was super popular all over TikTok, and so my sister started watching, and she said that she just had to have this adorable little jacket that the character wears. So, I'm going to be making this little bunny jacket as the second episode of Making Cosplay Things. Before we get started, you better like and subscribe. Okay, let's go! Starting off with materials, since the cosplay piece is basically just a orange jacket with some details added, I bought one off of Amazon to use as a base. Oh, that's very bright. That's a very bright orange. Well, oh man, I was not expecting it to be that bright. Of course, the cheap jacket I bought ended up being a highlighter orange rather than just a plain orange, but it's okay, I'll just work with what I got. The other materials I need is some dark blue fabric. This fabric I have here is just barely enough to make the ears, pockets, and some other little detail. I also need some buttons for the ears, buttons for the eyes, some white ribbon and some dark blue ribbon, and lastly, some dark blue yarn for the tail. To start off making Runa's jacket, I decided I wanted to pattern out the ears just so that they would be the right size and length and shape and all of that. So here I am with a roll of packing paper and I'm just going to make a quick ear shape that seems to be long enough. The ears end at about the elbow, so keep that in mind when you're making yours. I also made mine a little bit thinner at the top and a little bit wider at the bottom, but the shape of the ears isn't super clear in the anime, so just do whatever you feel looks best. Now I'm going to take that ear pattern that I made and place it on my dark blue fabric. Luckily I had just enough fabric to fit that ear piece on, and I'm going to pin the pattern to the fabric and cut it out. For the ears, I want four pieces of this pattern, so that would be two on each side. Here are the four pieces, just so you can see it. And now I'm going to take that same ear pattern and pin it to some batting. This is a optional step, you don't actually need to do this, but when I was looking at the pictures of Runa, I felt like the ears had some volume to them, and so I decided to grab this batting. You could also use stuffing if you wanted, or nothing. If you use nothing, it would make the ears actually a little bit lighter, so that might be better. But again, I just felt like they needed some volume, so I used this. Now I'm just going to take this tiny scrap of dark blue fabric that I have and cut some rectangles out of it for the pockets. These rectangles will be folded over to create even thinner rectangles for fake pockets on my jacket. Just for your own reference, they are 6 inches by 7 inches. Moving on, with the last little bit of scrap from my blue fabric, I'm going to make some tape which will cover the area by the zipper. If you look really, really closely at the picture, there is some stitches, but then the center part where the zipper is is also dark blue. So I'm just going to make some tape using a bias tape maker to make some strips that will cover that area. I need at least 54 inches of um, tape for the front of the jacket. Yeah, this is going to be enough. So here on my ironing board, I've got two pins that don't have plastic tops. Make sure of that. Also, my bias tape maker and the strips of fabric that I will be making the tape out of. So I'm just going to weave that through my tape maker and pin both sides of the tape. And now I'm going to place a cloth on top of that and iron it flat. The point of making the tape is so that all of the raw edges can be hidden on the inside when I wrap it around the part by the zipper. I'm just going to slowly pull the bias tape maker away from the iron and move the iron closer to it so that I end up getting the whole strip of fabric. If you watched my last cosplay video where I made Pietro Maximoff's pants, I also used tape in that and it wasn't bias tape because it wasn't cut at a 45 degree angle. 
This is also not cut at a 45 degree angle. It's just the scrap that I had left, but it's not as big of a deal that it's not because it's going on a straight line surface, straight down the zipper. So it doesn't really matter if it bends too much or not. Once that's done, I'm going to fold over the tape that I created again so that I get a nice crease in the middle of it. And here are all of the pieces we needed to cut out. So we've got our batting cut out of the ear shape, our four pieces of the blue fabric in the ear shape, two rectangle pieces for the pockets, and two strips of tape for the front of the jacket. Now it's time to start sewing them together. I'm going to start off with sewing the ears together. So here I have two layers of blue fabric and then the batting on top of that. And I'm just going to pin these layers together and sew them all together. I'm almost positive this is not how you're supposed to sew when you use batting, but I am sewing it this way because it's more convenient for me. I can get one stitch and have all of the batting stuck in place so it doesn't shift around since these will be hanging pieces. I'm just going to sew really, really close to the edge of the batting so that it's barely held in place and it doesn't like double up when I flip it inside out. Also remember to leave a space open so that you can flip this ear inside out. I'm sure there was a better way to go about this and I know all of the seamstresses that are watching this are probably cringing at how I'm sewing the batting straight to the fabric, but this is a good point for me to remind you that I am not a professional. Everything I know is self-taught or told to me by others, so feel free to leave in the comments the proper way to use batting <laughs> if you want so that others can see it as well. Anyways, now I'm just going to flip this ear inside out and we can start on the pockets. Now it's time to prep the pockets to be sewn onto the jacket. So the way I'm going to prep these pockets is I'm just going to fold them in half and I'm going to sew up the sides and up towards the middle. I'm going to leave a little, little gap in the middle so that I can flip it inside out. And the reason I'm leaving the gap in the middle is because I, when I top stitch, the ribbon's going to go over it so you won't be able to see it there. Versus if I left the gap on the side or something, then you might be able to see it clearer and we don't want that. So let's just sew these up real fast and flip them inside out. There we go, now that that's done, we can finally get started with sewing fabric to the jacket, starting with the zipper trim piece. But that means we're gonna be betting what? So in the picture, you can see that the inside is blue or there's, there's some blue strips on the front uh, by the zipper. So instead of switching out the zipper and all that jazz, I'm going to put these strips right down the front, right on this piece, like that. I'm just going to take extra care with this zipper trim piece because I really want it to come together and since it's on the front of the jacket it's one of the first things that you see and if there's any mistakes here it will really stand out or at least I'm afraid it will really stand out. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to sew one side of the tape to this little ridge by the zipper on the inside and then I'm going to fold it over and sew the other side of the trim to that edge. Also this way I can sew through just these two layers, not really care about what it looks like on this side. And then when I fold it over, I sew through the whole thing all the way down to the zipper. Yeah. This little trick of sewing trim is something I saw someone do on a t-shirt video. I'm not sure if this is actually the proper way to sew trim. Normally I will just put it over something and do one stitch because I'm lazy and I don't want to sew twice. But like I said before, I'm taking extra care with this bit because it's going to be really noticeable if I make a mistake. So, as you can see right here, I've sewn this. Oh. Can't even tell. There, I sewed along here on the inside of the tape, 
it's under the zipper just like that and you can see the sewing stitch right there so now that i've sewn that down i am going to here's the end of it fold that in first of all because we want a closed edge and then i'm going to sew this blue along here um, i'm going to just wrap it as far as i can so it's still got the raw edge hidden do that and sew along here um, hiding that stitch hopefully i mean it should be long enough for all of that to hide also since i'm sewing so close to this zipper the foot won't roll over it really easily so i switched to a zipper foot which has this like space on the side here so that the zipper itself which takes up a lot of like space can stay over here and it will still roll over the fabric that that, that makes no sense but <laughs> but hopefully you understood that and if you didn't um it's not really that that important it just makes it easier to sew super close to the zipper basically by sewing one side of the tape to the inside of that edge and then the other side to the outside, I'm also able to avoid the zipper at the same time having that little ridge covered so that the zipper can still zip up. Basically, the point is so that that ridge looks like it's blue and it's supposed to be blue on both the inside near the zipper and the outside of it. I just say... I am so impressed with myself right now. <laughs> I really like how that turned out. That looks good. <laughs> like you can still zip it up and everything. Wow, yeah, Sarah, yeah. <laughs> with that done, now it's time to focus on the giant stitches. So I'm going to use this eighth of an inch ribbon to do the giant stitches and they will be hand stitched. But before I hand stitch it, I have to top stitch my openings closed. And I mentioned it before, but I'm going to actually do the top stitching about a quarter of an inch inward where my giant hand stitches will be. This way the ribbon has a chance of covering up that top stitch versus the possibility of it showing. For the giant stitches, I'm going to be using this tapestry needle versus the tiny sewing needle that I have here because it will help me make a bigger hole in the fabric when I'm stitching it for the ribbon to slide through. But if you are following along to make your own and you don't have a large needle, you could just use a regular one or you could even go as far as to make a little hole where you want the stitches to be and just thread the ribbon through those. So now I'm going to start stitching the bunny ears. If I were you, I'd start learning how that. Let's just grab our ribbon and thread it through our tapestry needle. And I'm going to start with this stitch at the top so that when I close it up, it also closes up at the top. Here is some insider information about me if you haven't noticed from any of the videos. I suck at hand stitching. <laughs> hand stitching is so difficult for me. The people who do embroidery just amaze me because it's so difficult for me to just weave the needle back and forth through the fabric and have it be remotely even stitches or anything. So here you can see I'm using a ruler to try and make sure that each of my stitches are even in length. And eventually I realize I don't actually need the ruler. I could just use the grid that I'm sewing on top of to make sure the length of the stitches is equal. Each of my stitches is about an inch long and each of the squares on the grid is an inch long. So I just check that every single stitch. I cannot express how long this took me and how much my hands hurt after doing all of this hand stitching. I really struggled with pulling the needle through the thread each time. So to all of my hand stitchers out there, I commend you. You are amazing. <laughs> with one ear done, let's quickly do the other off camera and move on to putting them onto the jacket. These ears are going to be attached to the jacket with a large button. 
I actually 3D printed these buttons because I didn't have a pair of buttons that were large enough and the right color to use on the jacket. So if they look a little funky, it's because they're 3D printed, but I don't know, I kind of like them. So I'm just going to again hand stitch these buttons through the hoodie and through the ear in place. If you look at all of the pictures of Runa, you can actually see that the button doesn't have an exact color. It kind of looks silver in some areas, it looks tan in others, and it looks white in other pictures. So I just went with white because I felt like it would match the stitches the best and look more cohesive. And also, not that it matters, I made sure to do that parallel line stitch when I sewed these buttons on. Alright, let's quickly do the other one. And there is both of our ears sewn onto the jacket and we have the tape. Now it's finally time to move on to the pockets. That's what I like to see! So these pockets are going to be hand stitched on with that white ribbon that we used for the ears. Also it looks like there should be about four stitches there so I'll keep that in mind when I'm sewing the pockets to the jacket. As you can see, these are just going to be fake pockets because the jacket has its own pockets and I don't want to get rid of those. It's purely for the cosplay aesthetic look. As I'm stitching this flap onto the jacket, you can see I just pinned the rectangle in place so that it wouldn't move and so that I was sure that it would be, you know, horizontal. For these pockets, I paid less attention to the fact each stitch would be about an inch long because I really just wanted there to be at least four stitches on this pocket piece. There is one finished fake pocket flap and now I'm just going to turn it around and tie off the ribbon on the back side, trimming it a little bit. And now let's move on to the other pocket. There is our second pocket done, and now I can move on to the blue stitching by the zipper. For the blue stitches, I'm going to use this dark blue ribbon that I bought off of Amazon, of course. And just so that you can see the color match, it matches with the dark blue fabric that I used. So this stitch is, like I said before, going to go along the zipper. So let's just thread our tapestry needle and do some more hand stitching. Now that all of the hand stitching is done, it's time to move on to the button eyes. The decision's already been made, silly! So for the eyes on this hoodie, I could use these little black buttons that I have and just hand stitch them to the hood, but as you figured out by now, I don't like hand stitching. So instead, I found these pins that I had, and I never wear them, and the design on them is weird anyways, and I actually made these pins myself a long time ago. So I'm just going to take these pins and color them in with a sharpie, turning them black so that they look like little beady black button eyes. After letting the sharpie dry, it's time to pin them to the hoodie. I'm actually quite impressed with how these look. They really look like little button eyes. And because they're pins, I can always move them if I feel like they're in weird spots. It looks so cute. Now, last thing, I need a little bunny tail. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you both look psyched. So, I got some yarn, dark blue. And just so you can see the color match with the dark blue fabric as well, it matches pretty good. So I'm just going to unravel this a little bit. And I think the tail size should be about this size. This is a good size, so I'm going to use this speaker. <laughs> so to make the bunny tail, I'm just going to take the yarn 
and wrap it around the speaker or whatever object you decided to use. It could be your hand if you wanted it to be. And I'm just going to pull it off of that speaker, trim the edge, and tie it off, looping that around my bunch. And I'm going to cut those loops on the edges like you can see I'm doing right here. By cutting these loops, you're essentially creating a ton of little strings of yarn that are all tied into a bunch. I'm also going to reinforce the hold that I have wrapped around all of these yarns. So one more little piece of yarn just tied tight. There is our cute big fluffy pom-pom or bunny tail. Now I'm just going to sew that to the jacket. So I'm going to thread that tapestry needle from before and sew it up through the jacket, then through the tail, back down through the tail, leaving a little gap there so that it, I'm not going in and out of the same spot, and then back through the jacket. Then I'm going to take the ends of both of the yarn at the back of the jacket and tie it off together. Hi, Runa Yamotsky have graciously offered to serve as your referee! We've got our ears with the stitching and the buttons, and then our button eyes, our fluffy, fluffy tail, which looks so cute. Bam, fake pockets with the white stitching, boop. And our blue trim by the zipper, and our stitching, yeah. Let's ask Runa what she thinks. Negative 21 points! Cause how lucky are you anyway? <laughs> okay, so maybe she didn't like it, but let's ask my family. It's cute, it's cute. I really like the stitches you did. Yeah, mm. I like how the stitches turned out too. Uh -huh. Wow, that's so cute! <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Oh, and the little tail! <laughs> That's amazing. Thanks. <laughs> Here's the jacket. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you made buttons for it? Yeah. These are Two pins. Wait, that's smart. Yeah. Did you sharpie it? I sharpied it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the <I didn't> tail. <laughs> oh my gosh. It looks pretty cute. <laughs> oh. oh, these are fluffy too. <laughs> this is right where your butt is. So here my sister is in her full cosplay garb, lollipop prop, and everything. <laughs> I think it looks super duper, super duper adorable. I don't know about you. I think it looks so good. Even though the jacket is like a highlighter color, it's totally fine because the blue kind of neutralizes it a little bit. And I absolutely love how these stitches turned out. I'm really glad that I used some ribbon to do those bits. I think maybe I'll tack down the top of the ears a little bit more just because they look like they're kind of sticking up. But overall, I think it looks fantastic. This whole project took me about six hours in total to do, and about four of those hours was spent just trying to hand stitch everything. So if you're a quick hand stitcher, you could get this project done way faster than me. It also didn't cost a whole lot because I started out with a cheap jacket, and any of the materials that I bought I will absolutely use for other projects. If after watching this you're thinking about making this jacket, I highly recommend it because not only is it super cute, but it doesn't take a whole lot of time, it's cheap, and it's great for a beginner cosplayer who wants to make their own things. So that's the end of the video. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't yet. Comment down below if you like the jacket. Share this video with people who like the anime Kakegurui. Definitely watch that. And please subscribe because I post every Friday at 3. Thank you for watching. I can use the zipper. There we go. Boom. Oh god, this is gonna go on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> For thumbnails. thumbnails, exactly.